Hi, I'm Bruce at Pedal Prop. I'd like to show you the newest model of the Pedal Prop. The Pedal Prop is an add on pedal propulsion system for paddle sports watercraft. All previous versions of the Pedal Prop were basically custom made units. I pay, put them on inflatables, sit inside, sit on top. This version, this model, is for a sit inside. And I'd like to show you the differences between this and the previous versions of the pedal prop. The first is the front half of the frame is composed of aluminum extruded T-slot material. This allows very easy placement of the components, the adjustment for those, and any rearrangement that you might want to make later on. The second is the gearbox mount is now adjustable to accommodate different widths of watercraft. The third, the control cables that used to control the rudder have been replaced with a tiller arm. Makes it much easier for positive rudder control. Number four is the depth setting for the prop. Used to be you could only do two settings for the prop, in the water and out a certain extent. Now the prop is fully adjustable from fully submerged to entirely out of the water and anywhere in between. During this time the prop is fully functional, forward and reverse, and this also can be done while you're underway by one hand when you're seated inside the boat. Number five is the frame itself. The frame is now a folding frame. It used to be five foot long um, and it made it difficult to ship. Same thing with the uh, drive tube assembly. It's six foot long. Very expensive to ship. Now the frame is a folding frame and the drive tube assembly is composed of two parts. The tiller assembly is in a collapsing tube and it makes it much easier to ship. It is also works out very well with inflatable watercraft because you can fold the frame, take the drive tube assembly apart, and it's much easier to transport. So we'll take a look at the individual differences a little more closely now. Okay, let's take a closer look at this extruded T-slot material that's used in the front half of the frame. This is what the cross section looks like. You got four slots, one on each side, and into those slots go what's called a T-nut. Simply slips into place, screw goes there, and then you tighten down on whatever component you want to hold there. The entire um, assembly here is attached via this method. It's really, really easy to do any adjustments that you might need. You just loosen it up, slide it to where you need it to go at. Also, if you need to change the arrangements of your components, it's easy to do. Also, in longer boats, this will slide all the way back here. You can do all of that without drilling any holes whatsoever. It's a really nice system. Also, you have a lot of T-slot available to you for things that you might want to add to your boat. You have the inside, the top, and the outside. And you can use a bunch of standard accessories. You don't really need to go with the really expensive stuff. And it just goes, slips into the slot. This is just a standard, came with uh, one of the boats. And you just tighten it down and you can position it anywhere you want along the, uh, the frame. You could also do the same for um, fish finders, coffee cup holders, cell phone holders, anything of that sort. Okay, this is the second item that's different from previous pedal props. This mounting for the gearbox is adjustable to accommodate different widths. There's actually two ranges of widths. Um, 30 inches to about 34 inches. That's called the N version, which just stands for narrower. 
and this version here, which is basically a W version, just stands for wider, it'll go from 34 inches to 40 inches out. I'm just going to show you the outer adjustment on it, just to give you an idea how it works. The band clamp is loosened up. There's a tube within a tube, and this will slide out. You need to do an adjustment for the drive shaft that's inside there, and you also need to uh, make an adjustment on the uh, depth setter stabilizer mechanism to make it equal as far as your distance out. So this is the way that this works. And then once it's set, you tighten it up. And you can do that as many times as you need to. For instance, if you change boats, sell your one boat, move on to another one. If it is within this range that you would be able to just make this adjustment and accommodate your new boat. Okay, let's take a little closer look at the uh, depth setting mechanism for the prop. You'll see there is a mechanical stop right here, which is set by the customer. There is a slider that goes along the shaft. And this rope pulley mechanism is what the operator uses to raise and lower the drive shaft to put it in whatever position you want. Fully submerged, partially submerged, completely out of the water. So, all you really do is, normally this would be a one-handed operation. I don't have the leverage to do this and the table would slide all over the place if I tried it. So I'm using two hands on this, but you pull on this tab here, which basically is going to pull the rope, pull this one arm back, and it will lift up and then it will automatically lock into whatever position you set it at. You can then just release it, put it wherever you want to, all the way down until it hits the stop, or raise it just a little bit. It automatically locks in position, and then you just pull it again to put it in another, another depth setting or completely up out of the water. Okay, uh, now we will discuss the final difference here, which is the um, folding frame, which we'll cover in a minute, and then the two-part drive shaft assembly, and the tiller, which we'll cover now. You'll notice that the, uh, the tiller has got what I call a tiller retainer. It just basically keeps control of that loose end, so it get lost, drop down, uh, whatever. Uh, so that's a nice feature to have. But in order to break the drive tube down, uh, you basically first take care of the tiller. Pop this off. There is a tubing button in the tiller. The point, you take that and you just slide it down, collapse the tiller, and click it back on to the lower half of the drive tube assembly. Uh, you want to take this bungee off, which I'll explain in a later video as to what that's for. And then there's a tubing button located midway, which basically disconnects the center section. Let that one down easily. Okay. And there is a tubing button on the uh, depth setter stabilizer mechanism, which basically comes off. There are some optional clips which I use to hold the two drive tube assemblies together. It might make it a little bit easier for moving around, especially if you have a inflatable. Alright, this section, just a tubing button here. Take that out. There are no fasteners that you can lose. It's all internal, connected, nothing to lose. So, that's your drive tube assembly. Got a couple nice handles on it. 
you take this and you put it in your car if you have an inflatable or even if you have a rigid. Okay, last item is a folding frame. If you have a rigid kayak, chances are you're just not going to be doing this. You would simply put your frame on the boat and you'd leave it there. The only thing you'd have to take off during transport would be the drive tube assembly and that's just to keep it from potential damage during transport. If, however, you had an inflatable, you might be doing this every time that you broke your boat down. Very simple procedure. We only have two thumb screws on the inside. Simply loosen those up. They are captured in there so they cannot get lost. Do the two sides. And just fold it. And you are done. Okay, you can see that the frame would fit inside a uh, back seat of a car or a trunk of a small car and you set it up basically the reverse of the procedure screw in the two thumb screws that are snug and you're done in order to convert the sit inside to a sit on top, you use your same pillow crank assembly. You only have to rearrange the arrangement of the bearing support and the sprocket. Sprocket goes on the outside, bearing support goes on the inside. Then you also need the sit on top conversion kit, which is a set of idlers, and then four risers. This is what the pedal crank assembly looks like for a sit on top model. This is the idler assembly that is used. It is mounted on the frame with the T nuts. And then the pedal crank assembly is also mounted on the frame also with the T nuts. When changing from a sit inside configuration to a sit on top, there's one additional change that has to be done to the gearbox assembly. The sprocket, which is located to the inside of the frame, needs to be located inside the two supporting plates so that it will look like this. In this brief review, I think you can see that the pedal prop is the most versatile easy to configure pedal drive on the market today. Not only do you have the different versions, such as sit on top, can be easily converted. To a sit inside, can be adjusted and have any number of possible configurations. It is without a doubt the most advanced pedal drive system on the market today. This will fit inflatables, rigids, canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards. So if you want to stop paddling and start pedaling now, chances are good that you can add a pedal prop to your watercraft now. Check out my store at pedalprop.com. Thank you for watching.